hello and welcome back to part two of my review of the PNY XLR8 PS5 designed heatsink. In my first part, I talked a lot about the hardware, the design, and definitely how it compared against that of the Sabrent heatsink that I talked about on the channel quite a lot. But this video, we're going to be doing temp testing. That's right, we've installed the heatsink inside this PS5. I'm going to show you in just a moment. And along with that, we've attached our two node temperature sensor. Right now, the ambient temperature in this room is 18.8 C. And again, things are going to change as the system is in use. We're going to do the same test that we've always done. We're going to be doing some sustained reads, some sustained write, and we're going to be bench testing a couple of open world games, running those games for an extended period of time to see how the SSD interpretates interprets that game and generates heat and the heat sink is going to dissipate it into the air now before we go any further a few things we should clarify straight off the bat the ssd that's being utilized inside unlike a lot of the tests that i've done previously that i've been using the um t group team force cardia this video is going to be utilizing this the pny's cs3140 ssd so Although throughout this video, I am going to be referring to um, heat uh, temperature readings that came from the likes of the uh, uh, LN, um, sorry, L10, and of course, talking about the um, Elec gear and the Sabrent heat sinks as well, it has to be taken in context that these are utilizing different SSDs in their testing. So when we do compare against them, we are still looking at results from different SSDs at different times of recording. So again, huge impact there. We're using them for relativity, but by no means as a direct measurement between the two of them. We're gonna be doing much wider comparisons later on where I'm gonna to have to utilize the same SSD as much as I can. And if not, I'm gonna to have to kind of find common ground between all of them. They're very similar architecture to the SSDs that we've been utilizing, Fizon SSDs, 3D uh, 96 Lad TLC, NAND SSDs. So again, very similar, but still not the same SSD there. So make sure you bear that in mind in today's results when we look at comparative data not just rating this heatsink on its own with that ssd inside there another thing worth bearing in mind of course is that when we are running these tests they are being run one after the other we're doing the read test chronologically it goes the heavy write test first if we move data onto the games then we're going to be looking at Red Dead Redemption. Then we're going to be looking at GTA and then the heavy read test. That's not how it's going to come out in the edit. But if you need to look at the temperature, that is the order of which they were recorded there. So there you go. That is the summary. That is the setup for this test. Let's get this bad boy up and running. Run our test and have a look at those results. Okay, so our first test of the PNY heatsink here against the Ella 10 is a heavy write procedure. We're transferring around 360 gig of data from the internal PS5 over to the SSD underneath these heat sinks. As you can see, all immediately the Ella 10 started at a higher temperature, largely to do um, with the infrastructure being cased in that little slot there, but also the ambient temperature as well. And as you can see, they both, both go up quite highly. A heavy write procedure will always increase the the temperature on an SSD but immediately it becomes apparent that the Elateng M2 heatsink is certainly the hotter of the two overall when it's running there in the system indeed as this draws to a close uh, this took around eight minutes in normal speed um, the Elateng um, overall increased by 15.1 degrees and the PMY increased by 7.3 degrees overall as well as the PMY concluding much lower now for our next test, we were testing Demon Souls here, uh, testing the controller temperature on both of the SSDs underneath these heat sinks. They started off at quite a comparatively similar temperature, around about the 25 degrees mark, about four or five um, decimal place degrees between them. But already, we're already starting to see that Elateng um, be able to control the temperature and the overall increase in temperature a little bit worse. Now remember, that Elateng is inside that M2 slot of the PS5 there, so it's covered over by the M2 cover plate, as well as both sides of the PS5 cover uh, covered on both of these tests. Now whether you're looking at the overall air temperature there at the bottom, or you're looking at the controller temperature there at the top, it's very evident early doors very clearly that in terms of the controller temperature on the SSD, we're seeing an enormous increase difference on the Elateng, not having the ability to dissipate the heat outside of that slot uh, over the PNY, which is taking advantage of the system fans. 
But of course, then we've got the concern about what's going on with the overall core temperature of the system. And yes, as we can see there, uh, although the Elateng is reaching a higher temperature overall, if you look at the way they started on at 27.5 and 24.5 to the Elateng and PMY respectively, there was an increase of 1 degree on the PNY and 0.5 degree increase on the Elateng. So moving over to the next test environment, we look at taking advantage of the Unreal 5 tech engine demo of the Matrix there. And once again, at the top of the screen, you've got the controller temperatures and at the bottom, the ambient air temperature on that second node. Now, we gave the system a little bit of cool down time, but still nonetheless, the Elateng retained a lot of that heat compared to the PNY, a lot of that down to the system fan. Now, the Elateng this time started at 33.7 uh, and the PNY started at 27.9. And immediately, once again, the Elateng is increasing in temperature notably. Particularly on this Unreal 5 tech engine demo, there's a lot going on in the system. Now, in terms of the air temperature, this time, Although the Elateng has started lower at 26.1 and the PMY at 27 degrees at the ambient air temperature, that's that second node near the fan, this time, although the Elateng is eventually ending somewhere in the 27s and the PNY is going to creep into the 28s, it should be mentioned that the PMY actually only increased 1.5 degrees on the ambient temperature, whereas the Elateng M2 in that closed slot at 1.8 degrees. It's a small point, but if we're going to count the 5 degree, uh, the 0.5 degree difference earlier, we have to note on this too. Overall, across both of these games, the controller has certainly been cooler on the PNY heatsink compared with that of the M2. Finally we looked at transferring that data back onto the PS5, a read action. Now, this took a, a notable degree longer, around about 24 minutes, which, again, is because of the system's own internal bottlenecks. Now, what we noticed here, regardless of the fact that read operations are nowhere near as intensive as that of write operations, the temperature still rose, with the Elateng starting at 27.8 and the PNY starting at 25.2. Now, the increase on that Elateng was noticeably, noticeably higher, ending uh, in the 40s, I believe, at 46.6 degrees overall, an increase of 18.8 degrees, whereas the PNY ended at 29.5, an overall increase throughout this operation of just 4.3 degrees. And I think a lot of that is to do with the system fan kicking in to cool down the internal PS5 SSD. Overall, it's been quite a heavy sweep towards the PNY SSD overall. So, what do we think overall? I think it goes without saying that it definitely did its job. The temperature there was certainly kept cool. It definitely outweighed that Elateng in a number of areas. It has to be said, and again, I will always be a fan of a PS5 design heating. There's never really been any kind of debating point, at least not from me and most people online, that PS5 designed heat sinks actually work. They certainly work, but it's a question of how much you're getting for your money in terms of difference between those 10 and $15 heating. To put that into perspective, this heat sink, which again, the price is still a little bit early online because it only just launched. The price knocks around for somewhere in the mid 20s to the early $30 for that heating. That's uh, twice, even a little bit more than that Elateng there. And in terms of what you're getting for your money, it certainly does the job, it has to be said, but it didn't do the job consistently higher than the Sabrent. It still beat the Sabrent in a number of areas, but I'm looking forward when we have a more even playing field for SSDs, how they compare there. It's certainly, for me, a better choice than the, say, Growl Gear one that we talked about before, the Eno, because although that heatsink is good with its copper pipe, that one is crazy overkill over there. And I think this PNY is, you know, shaping up more and more to be the real contender against that of the Sabrent. I know a number of you kind of really do like that Elec Gear one there. And again, it's a great heatsink. But I still have the tiniest reservations about a heatsink that big inside this system and the ambient temperature throughout that. This system is not designed to have a big plate of metal like this inside that area. And that's my only main reservation. But ones like the Sabrent and, of course, this, this PNY XLR8 heating here, these are ones that I think find a very good middle ground. They're occupying that bay and that plate that the PS5 arrived with. And, as we've seen in our testing, whether it's the internal controller there that we put our thermal node on top of, 
or it's the ambient temperature, these do for me seem to find a much better middle ground, not only in price, but overall output and efficiency. But let's wait and see how they all compare when they're up against one another. But for me, this is still a solid SSD heatsink there. Um, I would say if you're already looking at buying a PNY SSD, this is a no-brainer. It's by far the easiest uh, one to get from them. Of course, there's also going to be the bundles, of course, which means they're probably going to practically give this away, as we've already seen from a number of brands with their own proprietary heat sinks. They bundle them in at the normally 2 TB level, but some of them at 1 TB as well. And then on top of that, if you're looking at this heatsink for your own third-party SSD, you know, you're going for your Seagate, your Samsung, your Sabrent, your whatever, it's still a great-looking SSD, although you're never really going to see it after day one. And in terms of output and efficiency and how it performed, you cannot fault it. So for me, big old tip there. But what do you guys think? Are you holding out still for the big comparisons that I'm going to be working on? They're going to take a little bit more time to set up, I'm afraid, but I will get on those so click subscribe if you want to make sure you are aware of those as soon as they go live if you've enjoyed this video then do click like it genuinely helps me understand what i'm doing right and makes each video better than the last and of course we're going to be talking a lot more about the subject of storage not only with ps5 but general storage throughout 2022 so do stay tuned for all of that and take advantage of the free advice section over on nas compared it's linked in the description genuinely free man by two humans me and eddie the web guy we don't do anything with email couldn't be bothered with your email to be honest there's donate buttons use them ignore them it's up to you it might take us next to a day or two to answer your inquiries because we get bombarded down there every single day and we try to get through them as quick as we can but we do try to answer every single one so do bear with us otherwise thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next video